Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rikewe Onua. Uh, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for always coming back to watch me. Um, so today's video is actually um I'm making this video because lots of people have asked me. I wasn't actually going to make this video because I I um I'm not right, I'm not like really in the best position to tell people how um to go about getting their visa and like the process and everything because i might have some information wrong and i am not an agent or anything so whatever information i'm giving is from what i know from my own perspective and it might not really apply to everybody and it might not really work for everybody yeah so that's why um so this is why i'm making this video so i'm just going to be giving a step-by-step -step process on how my application went how i went about my application yeah and like i said it's just a me thing right it might not really work this way for everybody so um uh, most people actually think that i'm here on a student visa but i am actually not i'm actually here on a work visa so i got an open work permit yeah, I, but I feel like the process is quite similar for every kind of, um, maybe except PR though. Earlier in the year, I was making my research on students visa for Canada and I saw that the process was actually very similar to what I did for work visa. So that's why I think that the visa processes are quite similar, but just some um, minor changes. So um, getting a work visa, right, you need to have a job here in Canada. Yes, you need to have a job here in Canada. You need to actually apply to a job here in Canada and then for them to be able to sponsor you. But that's not how I came here. Yeah. So there's another way you can get an open work permit that is not very common. And so the way I got my open work permit was my partner was eligible for a work visa and he applied for both of us work visas for both of us yes yeah, so i'm going to give a step-by-step -step process on how it went all in all totally it took about six months to actually get the visa and um, from what i heard for student visa i think is actually the same i think five months or so but i'm not going to speak much on that because i do not i do not know. i have to clarify that for an open work permit or an open work visa you actually do not need to have a job here in canada so that's what applies to me i did not need to have a job here in canada before coming here yes so you can come here and then it's open meaning you can actually work for any employer anywhere in canada applying for a work visa means you have a job here in canada but an open work visa means you can come here to work in canada and i do not know any other way of getting an open work visa except the route i went through okay so to start the process of from from my perspective um, what they requested from me was employment history that's basically knowing um, where I've worked employment and study history where I've worked, where I've schooled um, and the years between each of them and if there was a gap in your um, after studying and your in your work history you have to say oh this is the gap in my work history and that and um, so the next thing they asked me was um, asked of me was police clearance certificate and uh, medical uh, immigration medical exam so i had to do my medicals and then there are some forms that you have to fill when you go to canada immigration website to actually apply for this visa you have to fill some forms that are on there so the form is basically asking for your details so i can't really say what's on each of these forms but yeah, you have to fill each of these forms with whatever details that they are asking you for. That's basically your application. Then these other um, supporting documents, that's the um, employment history, study history, um, um, police clearance certificates, which you can get at... Um, I got it in... Is it Alagbon? Yeah, the one at Ikoi, the police station at Ikoi. That's where I got my police clearance certificates from um then the medical exam i did it at q life medical center so you have to for this medical exam they ask for medical exam for both students visa and any other visa that you are, that you are applying for and you have to take note that medical exam actually most times when you book for an appointment because like i think it's just q medical q life medical center that is doing this um um 
medical exam for immigration purpose i don't know anyone in lagos but like they have lots of people that want to actually do this medical exam because they don't just do for canada they also do for us so when you actually book for an appointment you might get an appointment three weeks later or two weeks or even a month later i think i know someone that said they got theirs a month later but i think i got mine in two or three weeks was it three weeks? i think three weeks yeah so take note that that actually takes time so yeah you um i did that and then um what else so basically doing all this and getting all this information all this um medical exam police crime certificate it took me about a month to gather everything or three weeks no a month because of the time the time for the medical exam and then for it to be ready i think it was ready the next in two days or was it the next day it was just it was ready like very in a very short period i think and then after that um after submitting every um of these documents that were that he asked for next thing was i got a request email for my biometrics so you have to wait for you to, for that request email or request letter for your biometrics because that's what you're going to take to the visa application center so yeah i had to now book an appointment at vfs global um i think that appointment took about two weeks again so because there are lots of people that want to travel outside nigeria whenever you book appointments in these places it takes a long time so these are one of the things that were actually slowing down the application the, the wait time for um, appointments and then um going to vfs i had to take my request biometrics request letter um passport and yeah i think just those two yeah just those two i think that's what i can remember honestly i can't really if i can find that biometrics request letter then i can check to see what and what was um asked of me but i can remember that i had to take that letter along and then the passport but after yeah. um doing my biometrics i knew that the processing time had begun so after your biometrics that's when the processing time actually begins that's when you have to now wait and they'll start reviewing your application to see if they want to grant you the visa or not i waited from the from when i did the biometrics to when i got a to, to when i got an email that my visa that there was a uh, not where is this thing? <laughs> so um i have to get my facts right actually i'm looking for documents to be able to give you guys information so, so um from the time that i did my biometrics which was in may early may to when i got a, a, a an email or a letter from canada immigration so i didn't even get the letter doesn't even say you've gotten your visa the letter just says a decision has been made on your visa um ap uh, on your visa application or is it on your visa on your application basically yes i'm kind of reading here a decision has been made on your application so from the time i did my biometrics which was in early may to when i got this letter in the first i think third of august or second of august so that was like from may june july august that was like three months so i waited three whole months to get that letter and when i got the letter it said oh a decision has been made on your application it didn't just say and then i needed to go to visa um application center to submit my passport um so there are two ways you can actually go to the visa application center yourself or you send your passport through dhl but the nigerian in me did not <laughs> i can't just send my passport and i don't, I don't know where it is going to or not know if they actually received it or not so i actually had to go to the visa application center myself this time you don't have to book an appointment you just go and when you get to the gates you tell them that oh i'm here to submit my passport and it just lets you inside you have to be there early i think before 10 so from 9 like when they are opening is when you can actually go they stop really early actually for you to submit your passport they stop really and the time they stop its collection of passports really early in the day so you have to go before 10 like nine o'clock make sure you are there by nine when they are opening so you just go to the front and say oh i'm going to submit my passport you don't have to queue or anything and then they just tell you to go up and when you go um to the top you have to carry your passport um and a copy of the letter that was sent to you the letter that actually says a, a decision has been made on your application you have to carry this letter carry your passport and on your passports and okay yes i forgot to I mention of this your expiry date on your passport they can't give you they can't issue you visa that extends that exceeds the expiry date of your passport you cannot get a visa that exceeds 
the expiry date of your passport meaning if you were to get a one-year visa right and if your uh, let's say your passport is going to expire in the next seven months they will actually give you a seven month visa and not a one-year visa because they can't give you something that exceeds your a visa that exceeds your um expiry date so if you know that whatever you're applying for whatever visa you're applying for if you know that from um from past um if you know that this visa is going to be two years make sure that you actually update your you actually um apply for your passport and everything make sure that your passport doesn't expire before that two years because if it expires before two years instead of getting two years visa that you should have gotten you will get the amount of time left on your passport so yeah take note of that okay so on the letter you have to on the letter it even tells you that when you are going to the um to the canada application center the visa application center sorry you have to take your passport with you a copy of the letter that says your decision has been made and then your part your there must be at least one blank page in your part of on your passport for those that to travel very you know you travel a lot you must have one blank page on your passport and um your passport must be valid for the duration of your expected length of stay in canada so if you know that uh, maybe they're going to give me a two years visa make sure that you have your passport doesn't expire before two years if it expires in eight months instead of two years visa, they'll give you eight months visa um, please note that we cannot issue a visa beyond the expiry date on the passports again like i just said so after that after submission of passport um i had to wait so i actually paid for delivery because i didn't want to go and pick it up again i paid for delivery of my passport to my house so um you get emails and messages from vfs telling you that your passport has gotten to abuja um it has gotten to where it is going to be stamped um it has been returned um you're going to receive your passport the next day so from when i submitted my passport to when i got it was about a week or five days i think it wasn't even up to a week i think it was like five days um i submitted the passport and then i got it back in five days and when i got my passport back i got it with the stamped visa and there was a letter called um a letter of introduction um let me look for that letter <laughs> because i have this big file here yeah so oh no 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 sorry i didn't get i'm so i'm like really mixing some things up because it's been a while so i didn't get not really a while but i didn't get this letter of introduction with the visa i got my passport back with just my passport and the stamped visa in it right yeah so this one came in the email this um, letter of introduction actually came in the mail. Yes, that's what, that's what, yeah. It came in the mail. Um, the letter of introduction just states that your application to work in Canada has been initially approved by immigration. Um, I think for student visa, you also get this that tells you that it has been initially approved. Now, this doesn't issue, this doesn't issue you a work permit. It just allows you it doesn't even allow you to enter canada it just allows you to enter their airport basically so for student visa and for work visa you get this letter i don't know about pr you get this letter that tells you that it has been initially approved but we're not saying that you can enter it so the visa is different from your permit when you get your visa visa is what they stamp on the passport visa doesn't authorize you to actually enter inside the country what allows you to enter the country is permits and where you get your permits is actually at the airport yes so um you have to take your passport with the stamped visa of course and then this letter of introduction you know that you have to show this letter of introduction at the airport so after i got my visa um i started booking flights preparing to travel and everything and then i traveled and okay yeah another thing before traveling if you are vaccinated you need to have your proof of vaccination that's your card and you also have to download an app called arrive can this arrive can app is just to help them um basically check to be, to be to be able to scan through people that are vaccinated and people that aren't right because i I, th I just think vaccination makes it easier for you to enter inside the country i don't know if you have to be vaccinated to enter canada but i know it makes your process your entry easier that's what i know so when you download arrive can you you can only uh, you should download and register on arrive can and 
you should upload your proof of vaccination to arrive can 72 hours before your flight so that's like three days or less before your flight you can do it on the day of your flight but you can only do it from three days before your flight so three days before your flight two days before your flight the day of your flight fine but just make sure you do it before you get to the airport yeah so um you download arrive can sign in pick the kind of it will ask some questions you pick your answer then you upload your vaccination um card that vaccine card that they gave people and after being vaccinated you upload the vaccine card to show that you've gotten your full um, dosage of vaccine and then it will give you to tell you it will give you a status basically there's a i or v i'm not really going to go into that but it just shows that okay we've seen your vaccination um we've seen the proof of a vaccination and we've acknowledged it or we don't accept this one or you, it's just like i can't really remember how that works but i know that you get a status and then when you get to the um to canada they can actually decide to maybe tell you to, to do something more or just let you go it just depends basically so um i did my arrive can got a status you have to also print out the receipt of your arrive can so you are carrying the receipt of your arrive can your um that's for me right for work visa i had to bring along my receipt of my arrive can um the letter letter of introduction my passport um if you have a place to stay already you just um print out your proof of housing that you have where to stay yes you proof you print that out that yes i have where to stay and that was it that's those are the documents i needed to have with me basically yeah um and then when i got to when i got to canada airport to the immigration they took my letter of introduction from me and they just actually gave me the work permit they didn't really ask me any question actually because i was i saw that they were asking people question and i thought they were going to ask me question but i wasn't asked any question so i just got the permit and that was it actually it was a very <laughs> kind of a very smooth process for me i know that it's not always this smooth for every other kind of visa or for every other person it was a smooth process but it was very long it was very very long so if i know that canada um application canada visa application you don't need to do interviews you just need to fill so many forms so at the beginning it wasn't smooth actually because the the, the process of filling these forms going to get this going to get this um, document going to do your medicals and um, biometrics um going to for police clearance it wasn't actually fun at all right that that part wasn't fun but after you do all that you just have to wait a long time so you have to be patient canada um process can be really slow it can be really really slow right so you have to actually be patient you have to be really really patient i waited for three months i wasn't even thinking about it anymore so when i got i was like oh <laughs> okay <laughs> like i had to like be really really patient um okay so regarding housing um we actually got someone that was already in vancouver to secure housing for us and it's actually temporary so sort of like an airbnb is furnished and everything um and we paid for two months so it means that we're actually actively looking for another apartment to move to because we can only be here for two months uh so yeah i think that's your best bet your best bet for accommodation really is getting a temporary apartment probably airbnb because for you to actually get a permanent apartment most landlords actually want to see you so when you when you find these houses or maybe facebook marketplace or live they want to actually see you and you also have to actually see the place so you don't get scammed you have to see the landlord you have to go to the um house to actually see if what you're seeing in pictures is what you're seeing is what you actually get in real life um and they also want to know if you are able to pay they just want to basically know who is going to be staying in their house that's very hard to do from outside canada so it's you might be lucky to actually find a permanent apartment from outside canada but it's not very um it's actually not very common yeah so i know what, what is common that people also do is to get a roommate so you look for a roommate from nigeria so if you're probably a student um you look for probably you might have groups or something i don't know so you can find your students in your school 
that are actually looking for roommates so those ones are here already they, they already have the house or they are looking for the house and then they need a roommate to split the rent with yeah i think that's another um, very easy way to go about is looking for a roommate in your school that you guys can rent the apartment together so aside that it's just airbnb then when you get here you can start apartment hunting uh, if you can pay one month two months ahead that's fine airbnb or um not not necessarily airbnb it can be temporary housing like maybe check for platforms that offer temporary housing yes this isn't an airbnb but it's sort of like an airbnb yeah so that's how i basically um got my apartment we just we don't we didn't really go through any much process just got somebody to to um secure it for us and then we just paid because we didn't need to go through any um checks or anything because it's just like an airbnb so they don't really check much we're not signing any lease for you to sign a lease or anything you need to you need to actually speak to the landlord and you know landlord has to pick you before you can say okay you're signing a lease so it's just easier doing a, doing everything from here from nigeria temporary housing is your best bet from what or getting a roommate is your best bet from what i know yeah. that's how it actually went for me um i hope i've been able to answer some of your questions that you had regarding my process it was just this for me so thank you guys for watching my video thank you for subscribing make sure you hit the like button leave your comments and subscribe if you have not if you got to this point in this video and you haven't subscribed please subscribe thank you like my video share and drop your comments see you guys in my next video bye